very good morning to all of you <coughs> honorable minister transport shri puwad ajay kumar garu honorable minister for forest environment science and technology endowments and law shri indra karan reddy garu honorable principal secretary of uh, roads and buildings and transport shri sunil sharma garu honorable principal secretary industry and it shri jayesh anjan garu tsic md garu narsimha reddy garu ts redco md janay garu to all the participants you know who have just signed uh, memorandums of understanding with the government of telangana and to all the friends in the gathering here a warm welcome to all of you before i go into my formal speech i would also like to acknowledge on uh, my my bad you know we live in a virtual reality kind of situation today so i forgot to acknowledge shri pavan goenka who's joined us specially the chairman uh, so ceo of uh, mahindra group and shri sunil mehta ji of uh, the yes bank group and uh, shrimati anna roy from niti ayog thank you madam for joining us and please do convey to mr amitab khan that we missed him um before i go into my formal speech i just wanted to say one thing quickly you know i was talking to a friend of mine you know after seeing uh, what's been happening around the world you know during this pandemic how nature was healing itself and i was getting all these videos on social media how nature really is healing and how the world is so much of so much of a better place you know without humans kind of killing whatever we've been doing kind of doing inflicting all the damage we've done one of the things a very learned and a very you know knowledgeable friend of mine said i said what is the solution going forward as from a government perspective what do we do to make sure that uh, you know we help our environment we pass on a better planet to our children what do we do he said something very very interesting he said follow the 3d mantra i said what is that and he said first thing focus on decarbonization second focus even more on digitization and thirdly focus also on decentralization now i don't need to explain to any of you in this room decarbonization or digitization i think you all know it rather well now what did he mean by decentralization i think what he meant was see i also wear the other hat of uh, minister for urban development and municipal administration uh, one of the biggest challenges i face in that ministry is the rapid urbanization and suburbanization that is sweeping our nation today telangana in fact is one of the most urbanized states in india we are almost 43 44% urban population and in about 5 to 7 years in fact majority of telangana would be living in urban areas and minority would be living in rural areas that's the reality now how do we address this why do people migrate why do people urbanize people urbanize in search of better livelihoods in search of better medicare facilities in search of better education facilities so what this learned friend of mine meant was decentralize while we can't completely contain urbanization at least we can hope for suburbanization in a structured planned way create more counter magnets create more integrated townships ensure that people actually move further away create more economic clusters around the city of hyderabad as was pointed out by mr goenka while mahatma gandhi was right when he said india lives in its villages the fact today after 75 years of independence is india is run by its cities today our cities have become the epicenters of economic activity today for instance if you take the example of hyderabad nearly 50% of state gsdp comes from our capital city nearly 50% of telangana's gsdp is contributed by hyderabad so therefore it's extremely important to conserve to preserve and to ensure that the economic vitality our cities offer remains intact if we are to grow into a 5 trillion economy as our honorable prime minister keeps alluding to or if we really have to get into the league of developed first world countries as we all combinedly dream of every so often now how do we achieve that how do we go about doing it recently there was floods in hyderabad we all know that cloud bursts climate changes unseasonal rains are not only affecting urban denizens they are also affecting our farmers they are also affecting people across the world now one of the nicest things and one of the most interesting things i have heard today from the previous speakers 
was sustainable mobility. You know, we talk about sustainable energy all the time. But today I heard Pawan Goenka mention about sustainable mobility. He also talked about shared mobility. Now these are the things I think our cities today need if we really have to ensure that we preserve their fabric, we preserve their growth momentum, and we grow into a league of first world country in years to come, years that lie ahead of us. Now having said that, I believe what has been accomplished is very little, but what lies ahead, the road, li the road that lies ahead in terms of ensuring that we get there with respect to sustainable energy and also sustainable mobility is going to be an arduous, is going to be a difficult journey, but I think with all stakeholders participating, government, governments in cities, governments in state, government in Delhi, and also, when I say Delhi, I don't mean Kejriwal, I mean government of India, and also all stakeholders, the private sector, the startups, the large OEMs, the aggregators, all of us working together, I think will be, therein lies the real success of uh, this policy launch today. Of course, as was pointed out by my friends earlier, Telangana, in fact, has come out with an extremely comprehensive policy. It does, does not talk about electric vehicles uh, in itself. We also have ensured that the energy storage policy is dovetailed with our electric vehicle policy because these are two extremely, uh, you know, uh, uh, tight-knit ideas which need to work together cohesively. Now, I'm also delighted that two very important ministers and their uh, ha, ha, are, uh, you know, seated on the dais. For this electric vehicle policy to be successful, I think these three ministries need to work together very, very closely. One is, of course, to promote investments, to promote innovation, industry and IT ministry, which is represented by myself and Jay Ranjan. We need to be working closely with our colleagues to uh, ensure that electric vehicles are adopted and people actually lap them up. We need to work closely with Honorable Minister for Transport and his Secretary, and to ensure that whatever we do remains in consonance with environment. We need the support of Honorable Minister for Environment, Science and Technology. So the fact that Telangana government has not only thought this through in terms of policy, but also in terms of ensuring that the policy is enforced effectively, implemented effectively, we brought out all stakeholders and this multi-stakeholder engagement, I believe, will lead to a very successful implementation of this policy that our state has come out with. As I pointed out, Hyderabad is today our capital city and it is the epicenter of our economic activity. This city today, in fact, I urge not only Mr. Pawan Goenka and to every electric vehicle manufacturer in the city, our dream today, in fact, as we launch this policy, is to make great strides of progress in electric vehicle adoption and also make our city and our state the epicenter of electric vehicle manufacturing and adoption. Now I offer the city of Hyderabad as a test case for all electric vehicle manufacturers to come and work with us. Come and work with our Hyderabad Metro Rail. Come and work with our MMTS. Come and work with our RTC and see how together we can explore better public transportation solutions, better shared mobility solutions with our aggregators. Uber, Ola, and many others out there. We could work together jointly to ensure that more and more people are taken away from their private vehicles, which are gas guzzlers today, to these wonderful vehicles, which are environmental friendly. The state is already, in fact, one of the leaders in sustainable energy production. We've made, as I, as I pointed out, when we started our journey about six years ago, we only had 45 megawatts of solar energy being produced from our state. But today, I'm delighted to share with you that uh, we are number two in the country with more than 4,100 megawatts of solar energy production in a very, very short span of time. That goes to show you the commitment of our Honorable Chief Minister, Sri K. Chandrasekhar Rao Garu, to renewable energy, to sustainable energy solutions. And uh, we are looking to also, of course, ramp up all possible energy solutions, uh, especially on the sustainable front. Now, when it comes to manufacturing, in fact, I'm delighted today that uh, we've signed about five MOUs, not only with uh, manufacturers, but also some regulatory authorities. Our manufacturing sector today, in fact, in Telangana, is 
in spite of the fact that we have, uh, you know, someone like Mahindra manufacturing nearly 150,000 tractors, a large OEM from, Zai from their Zahirabad plant. And I'm delighted, Pawanji, thank you very much if you're listening in on making the announcement that uh, you're going to bring in the electric tractor with all Japanese technology and it would be manufactured out of Zahirabad. It's a matter of pride that, uh, you know, the largest, um, you know, tractor manufacturing facility in Asia today, which is based in Zahirabad, will also start manufacturing electric tractors. I'm sure the farmers in our country would look forward and will surely lap up the advancements that you guys are making in electric tractors as well. Our policy is comprehensive and therefore today I'm delighted we have Olectra, Maitra, Gaim, and you know um, other M ETUs and uh, you know others who have signed, a, signed ETRIO, I'm sorry, uh, have signed MOUs with us. Our policy does not limit itself though to electric vehicle manufacturers only. Our incentives, our policy incentives will also be extended to charging station, uh, you know, uh, uh, charging stations and also battery manufacturers. And I'm delighted that uh, we are receiving several players and several uh, proposals with intent to set up charging stations and also storage solutions. Now, I also wanted to quickly point out two things. Like I said, a cohesive approach between departments, between the various facets of my ministry, that is the industry and commerce, also need to be in place if we have to make an EV policy a truly successful policy. So therefore, let me share with you that uh, in our state today we have the largest electronics manufacturing cluster, if you look at them in a, in a combined uh, way. We have more than 1,000 acres of land available at our disposal. One is E-City in Raviryal and another one in Maheshwaram. Between the two of them we have 1,000 acres of land at our disposal for electronics manufacturers. Likewise, we also have a huge NIMZ, the National Investment Manufacturing Zone based out of Zahirabad, where I already mentioned that Mahindra's, one of the largest OEMs of our country, has a significant plant. We would like to promote it as an automobile cluster and ensure that more than 1,000 acres again are allotted for any automaker who would want to come into our state and work with us so as to ensure a complete comprehensive ecosystem of OEM, supply chain can coexist together in one single location. And also, I'm happy to announce two clusters, two industrial clusters. One in the Chandanvalli Sitarampur cluster in Shabad in Rangaradi district, which is already attracting significant investment and which is uh, where I think uh, both Olectra and Maitra are setting up their plants, will shape up into an EV cluster. And also another very important cluster in Divitipalli in Mahbubnagar will also be developed as another new energy park, new energy and new uh, you know, um, EV cluster. Likewise, we also plan, in fact, to develop a mobility cluster, which I will be announcing soon, uh, possibly sometime next month. We have, again, a number of very interesting technology players and also auto manufacturers who are coming together for the first time in creating this mobility cluster. So this approach of having an automobile cluster, an electronics cluster, an EV cluster, and also a mobility cluster, I think would provide that comprehensive ground for anybody who's interested in electric vehicle space to make Telangana their hub and look nowhere else, no further, uh, you know, for their enterprise and entrepreneurial ideas when it comes to setting up base in India. We will continue, like I said, you know, through TSI Pass and other very progressive initiatives under the dynamic leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister to continue to attract manufacturing and also continue to focus on expanding our research ecosystem through a collaborative effort with the private sector and also the wonderful academic institutions we have. Let me also remind you that Hyderabad, in fact, has a significant base of electronics companies in the form of ECIL, and I'm not talking now, I'm talking legacy. ECIL, BEL, in fact, uh, HAL, and all of these companies, all of these large public sector undertakings, uh, you know, which, have, uh, which are, uh, you know, having a significant presence in Hyderabad, have shaped up the ecosystem. And there is a large, small and medium entrepreneurial ecosystem that already exists, which will again propel our drive and our ambition to be the leading EV and leading electrified state in the country, as a leader, in fact. And let me just give you some uh, broad statistics. You know, when um, the world economy and India's economy also, in fact, has not been doing very well for the last uh, 
more than a few quarters. In fact, I, as you all may remember, even before Corona hit us, I think the last eight quarters preceding, you know, the pandemic, also we have seen slowdown across the country. But fortunately for us in Telangana, our annual GSDP growth rate has been consistent. We've been growing at a breakneck speed, and we've been growing at a much, much rapid pace than any other state in the country at 14.2% over the last five years. We are consistently ranked as among the top three states in the country on the ease of doing business rankings. We have slipped the slot this year, but we'll bounce back, I'm sure. And our TSI pass, which is a landmark single window clearance system, has been instrumental in bringing more than $28 billion of investment in the last five years. Telangana continues to remain number two as a city uh, and state in IT software exports, but our growth rate has been substantially higher than the national growth rate. In fact, while the country has been growing at about 8%, we've been growing at about 18%, which goes to show you that our growth momentum has not slipped. We've also recently added many EV-related technology firms, such as ZF Automotive and Electronics, ZF Automotive, and electronics firms such as Oppo, Vivo, Skyworth, Intel, Micron, all of them today are having significant presence in our city. Our innovation ecosystem is second to none, with important uh, players in important institutions such as RICH, the Research and Innovation Circle of Hyderabad, TASK, the Telangana Academy for Skill and Knowledge, soon to be coming up T-Works, and of course T-Hub, which is widely known. We intend to leverage our strength, strengths in electronics, aerospace and defense, and information technology sectors creating synergies, thereby developing as a center for research and innovation for all electric vehicles, battery technologies, and other emerging technologies such as autonomous and connected vehicles. We have taken a pragmatic approach in drafting this policy. We have consulted the industry. We have also discussed with various other public policy institutions, and I guarantee that if we meet the initial numbers, because there might be a concern, that the numbers that we've showcased in this policy are on the lower side in terms of adoption. I promise you one thing, that if we meet the initial numbers, I shall go back to the Cabinet and plead with Honorable Chief Minister to further increase the numbers and extend incentives to as many people who adopt uh, to these electric vehicles as possible. As I pointed out, I think the key departments, Transport Department, of course, plays a very important role in regulatory and adoption of EVs. I request the Honorable Transport Minister and Transport Secretary to Work with, work with us closely, and let's work together in ensuring that uh, this becomes a success. Energy Department also needs to take measures to make charging easily available. I'm glad that uh, they are represented here by Mr. Janaya, who will ensure, but TS Redco will also set up lot, a lot of uh, charging stations. MA and UD, of course, which is also under my supervision, will ensure all regulatory approvals and setting up of necessary infrastructure with respect to our uh, charging stations that we will be setting up in metro stations and elsewhere will also be, and parking lots also will be, you know, factored and will be given whatever incentives are required to make it sustainable. We are also, as I pointed out, planning to establish public charging stations at airports, railway stations, metro stations, parking lots, bus depots, markets, fuel stations, malls, etc. And I request all charging station players to come forward and work with us. And we can work with, we are not exclusive to anyone. We will be open. We will work with, uh, you know, all the leading players in the industry in a very transparent fashion, and we look forward to working closely with you. We are already establishing 178 charging stations in Telangana, and the state already, as was pointed out by Honorable Transport Minister, has a fleet of buses plying through TSRTC. We are currently engaging with ARAI, with whom we have just signed an MOU, to collectively work towards promoting research and development for manufacturing of electric vehicle and energy storage systems, because looking forward, as was pointed out by Anna Roy, India needs to find its own solutions. We cannot be aping the West. We cannot be aping any other country with respect to EVs because our situation is very different. Our, you know, our, our, our people are very different. Our approach to our roads, our approach to our urban planning, our approach to adoption of technology is very different when, when compared to other countries and other, other, other parts of the world. We believe that the EV adoption would increase more and more since the policy just rolled out today, as was pointed out again by my previous speakers. While Government of India may have launched out their idea, their, um, you know, their efforts three years ago, 
I think it's very, very important for the states to join this to actually, you know, uh, gain momentum. And with Telangana now, um, you know, coming out with a, its own policy, I believe the adoption would improve and increase at a rapid pace. So we invite the industry in India and abroad to come forward, make Hyderabad as their base for manufacturing operations, as we believe local manufacturing is the key to achieve the price performance parity and enable faster adoption of electric vehicles. Once again, I thank all the stakeholders who have participated in policy making, who have come forward to invest in the state of Telangana, and I look forward to interacting with you more often and more closely to ensure that Telangana truly becomes the hub for electric vehicles in India. Thank you very much.